Hello everyone, thank you for joining. Alright, so let's get started on the, today's live also. So it's the uh, 19th of August 2020 on um, Wednesday today. I hope you're having a great day. Sorry I was a little late, a uh, minute or two minutes late because uh, there was some connection issue. So I had to reconnect uh, the system to the YouTube. So sorry, it took a little bit of um, time to start the session today. But thank you for joining everyone. I hope you're having a great, great day today also. So, um, let's see. So yeah, today's topic is about um, uh, multiple position management. So every time I take trace, I take uh, two positions or three positions. And today I will show you how I take uh, two positions to take trace and how I exit on these two positions. And I will tell you the, tell you the reason why I take two positions. So every day, as you can see, every day I talk about different topics. So today is on Wednesday. So every Wednesday and Friday, I talk about my own strategy, which is called KTS, case trading strategy. So I talk about these uh, position managements and also a uh, scarcity gold cross, dead cross, or a uh, Fibonacci, or Bonnie Japan, or you know any any other uh, strategies, Tokyo box breakout, things like that. And um, I talk about these strategies on this KTS on Wednesday and Friday, and on Tuesday and Thursday I talk about Ichimoku Kin Kohyo. I look at the market, and I will show you I show you exactly how I view the market through the Ichimoku. And that's Tuesday and Thursday. And every Saturday, I talk about uh, psychology, money management uh, type of uh, topics. And on Sundays, um, I uh, go over the, char the charts, the pairs, stocks and commodities. I mean, indexes and commodities um, my, by my weekly Ichimoku for, uh, forecast. All right, so for those who are new to my channel, uh, my name is Kei, K-E-I-K, -E and I am a Japanese full-time forex trader based in Tokyo, Japan. In this YouTube channel, I mainly talk about how not to lose overtime uh, for those who have been still struggling in trading, while well, most other traders would focus on how to win or how to make profit. I focus on how not to lose overtime, because it's been my strategy. And also, I have been using Ichimoku Kin Kohyo for the last uh, five years, uh, seriously five years, as one of my main uh, trade strategies. And I have been sharing extensive knowledge through the original, original books in this YouTube channel. So this is the original book of Ichimoku, and this is one of the volumes of Ichimoku. I have five volumes of Ichimoku Kin Kohyo original books, and I've read through and still reading it to prepare for the next uh, book that, uh, that's going to be available within the Ichimoku community. So, and as far as I know, I think I am the only Japanese trader who teaches Ichimoku Kin Kohyo from the original books in English. So hopefully you enjoy my Ichimoku lectures too. I run, uh, I run the close to Ichimoku community that you can enjoy. So um, yeah, when you click the join button, that's where you can join. So if you see more details, you can click the down li link below to see um, the details of uh, what you can get on this community as well. So, all right, um, let's get to the topic now. So yeah, this is the new picture that I just created. This is like a Japanese, like summer festival type of uh, picture, like uh, these lanterns and these, um, how to say, like, uh, you know, the gate, like uh, with, the, with the fabric gate. So unfortunately in Japan right now, uh, there is no summer uh, festival, like a bond festival. Everything's canceled and fireworks is canceled. So, um, you know, it's a pity. And at least I just want to feel the summer in Japan. And that's why I kind of created this, um, this uh, picture like this layout. Anyways, um, let's get uh, started to the topic now. And let me just uh, go over quickly who's here. And Josie Dinesh, thank you for joining. To see you, Roy. And Ankara Ani, Tauhid Marusan, thank you for joining. Marusan recently joined as a um, um, moderator. 
So thank you, Marison, for your contribution as well. All right, and uh, let's see, Jack Smith, thank you for joining. All right, and uh, let's see, uh, Cyril, good to see you. And uh, uh, Zoib, Jaren, Muchuno, Brigitta, thank you for joining, to see you. Robert, Hassel, Duke, Jaren, uh, Cyrus, Sandro, Fabio. All right, Mr. Finantes, thank you for joining. Melanie, good to see you. All right, Mahid, and uh, uh, all right, WM. All right, Moana, thank you for joining. Good to see everyone. Thank you for joining. All right, so let's get started right now to the topic. So, um, multiple position management. Um, so every time I take trace, I take one or two, or I mean, I don't take one. I only take two or three, or sometimes I take five positions. So um, let me explain first when I take trace, right, based on my own a strategy called KTS. So in KTS, I capture trends by using Kumo and Kijun Sen only. Um, if you want to ma be a master of Ichimoku Kin Kohyo, then uh, you can take the Tenkan Sen and Chikou Span as well to capture trends, the decent trend. But uh, if you are uh, not really familiar with the Ichimoku, but if you still want to capture trends, then uh, Kumo, Senko Span, BA, and Kijun Sen will do. And that's actually my backbone of my strategy, how to capture trends. So uh, today I have, uh, I picked up two pairs that are trending nicely. And one is GBPUSD. GBPUSD right now, if you look at the daily chart, so I always do the top-down analysis. I always look at the higher time frames and break it down to the lower time frames. So if you look at the daily chart, uh, you can see that um, the Kumo is moving up. Let me zoom in a little bit. Oops, this is too much. All right, there you go. So if you look at the Kumo here right now, first of all, the Kumo is trending up itself, and the thickness is great. This is thick enough, and this is long enough. So this is a decent Kumo shape that I really like. So I look at the Senko Span B. So when Kumo is trending up, Senko Span B is the lower part, and Senko Span A becomes the upper part of the Kumo. And you can see that both are trending upwards now. And also, Kijun Sen is also moving up. So this is like the perfect order, if you will, uh, in a, a moving average. And this is a beautiful um, and stable uptrend on a daily chart. So once I confirm this one, then I break it down to mid time frames, which are 30 minute chart and one hour chart. So this is a beautiful uptrend, first of all. So I look at the one hour chart, for example. And what I can see is the similar setup, right? Kumo is thick enough and trending up this way. And technically, single span B is flat right now, but single span A is moving up. And Kijun Sen is also moving up this way. So this is a decent uptrend in definition. So we can expect the price breaks the recent high upper this way. And that's why I look at the lower time frames to capture uh, the trading edges in uh, multiple confirmations. So this is an overview of how you can capture and confirm the trends. And hopefully you get this idea. All right, this is pretty simple. Um, I'm not really talking about different things. I'm not really talking about like these all these Ichimoku strategies, Ichimoku like uh, knowledges or wisdoms, right? I'm only looking at the Senko Span BA Kijun Sen angles in two different time frames and when you confirm this one then this is actually the uptrend so right now uh, if you look at the price action uh, it looks to be consolidating right it looks to be consolidating but because of the fact that the kumo is trending up and senko span a up and kijun sen also pointing upwards there is a higher chance still in the market that the price breaks the recent high uppers this way. But if Kijun Sen goes flat, if Kijun Sen goes flat completely, then there is a chance that the price goes backwards. So I won't look for the buy chance anymore. But as long as Kijun Sen points upwards, there is still a possibility 
for the price to break upwards. And that's why I look at the 15 or 5 minute chart to capture the trading edges to buy. All right. And if you look at the 15 on this one, so this is again GBPUSD that I've been looking at. So you can open up a chart and you can look at the same currency pair right now. There might be a slight difference among the uh, platforms and brokers, but if you, as long as you get the bigger picture, it should be fine. So let's move down to 15. So here is a 15 minute chart. Okay. This is a 15 minute chart of uh, GBPUSD currently live. And I am looking at the market. As I look at the market, uh, this is not really a favorable setup. And you know, the, you know the reason why? The hint is actually from the yesterday's live. Let me ask you a question here now. Um, this is not really my favorite setup. And can you guess what the reason why? If you are here on this uh, live stream yesterday, you know the answer. So let's uh, let's get some uh, answers now. I will just wait for a couple of uh, seconds here. So if you happen to be in front of PC or mobile, you can just type your answer now so that you, you can engage this uh, learning together. Yeah, I encourage you to type your answer because uh, you know if you answer it, if you type it out, and if you output, uh, that will be the effective, the most effective way to input yourself. You remember things when you output and actually that's the reason why I do these lives every day also but what will be what kind of uh, pattern is this on this wave is the big hint <laughs> I think already you already know the answer now all right I start to see some comments now all right too messy all right, how messy is that? Yeah, you can say messy, but how messy is that? You have to be more precise. All right, Keyona, thank you for joining. Good to see you. All right, uh, okay, this is a Y wave pattern. All right, inside the cloud, right? The price is inside the cloud, and this is Y wave. Y shape, we have Y wave, all right? All right, Jack Smith, uh, if in a daily time frame the price was inside the cloud, but in the 4-hour chart, 1-hour time frame of trend and uptrend, then we should look for a buy position 5 or 15 minute time frame. Yeah, breaking down to lower time frames. Yeah. As long as Kumo's moving up, I mean Senko Span B up and Kijun Sen up in daily chart, um, you can look for the buy chance. And the price should not be in the Kumo when they're moving up. I mean, um, if um, if uh, it might be the Kumo might be twisted, but still too young, too short, so uh, you don't want to look for the buy chance, anyways, at that time when uh, these lines are up. All right, ranging it's Y wave, Y wave in cloud. All right, so it's either Y wave and in the cloud. Okay. What else? Uh, Kumo twist in Tenkan Sen Kyun's and entered cables. All right, consolidating. Y waves are right, right. Y waves. It's Y pattern. All right. <laughs> yep, yeah, yeah. Y pattern. It's in the range. Price is in the cloud. Yeah, this is in the range, but uh, this is my favorite range pattern. Yes, yes. Y wave, flat Kumo. Right, triple top. Right. <laughs> and this is the best. And oh, um. Surikita, thank you for your comment. Got this channel yesterday and this is the best and the deepest explanation of Ichimoku and subscribe. Sure, thank you. Stay gold. Thank you for your subscription. Mehed head and shoulders pattern. Y wave in the Kuma and ranging. Double top and wave. Oh yeah, M wave. That's a good one. Y wave is the most brutal. Right. Y wave consolidating. Right, right. So you get the answer already. Yeah. So this is Y wave. Y wave. 
and white wave is not my favorite pattern. And if it appears in 15 or 5, right, uh, it takes time to see a next trend. So white wave is actually the wave that actually expands this way. So in this case, the highs are getting higher and the lows are getting lower. So in Ichimoku Kinkohyo, this is called Y wave. It's kind of expanding uh, while it's consolidating. So the volatility is increasing while it's consolidating. So it might go up, but sooner it goes down. It might go down. It might be resisted on this level and goes down. If it goes downwards, then it might be supported and goes up this way. But either direction, the price is in the range and it's kind of difficult to expect which way the price will be breaking out. It's called Y wave because if you look, if you just add one more line, then horizontally this is like the letter Y and that's why this is called Y wave. But anyways, right, this is the chart that I will stay away. Although I see a decent uptrend in multiple time frames, in higher time frames, I would uh, wait. Uh, I would look at other pair. And let me tell you the reason why. Uh, first of all, I look at the Bollinger Bands to expect the market uh, uh, bro break in uh, either direction. And I, I look for the squeeze. But within the Y wave, of course, Bollinger Band keeps expanding, as you can visually see. So this is one of the reasons why it's difficult to, uh, difficult to expect which way the market is going. And also, I, I use stochastics. In my stochastics, this is the 30, 10, 10 setup. Person K30, person D10, and slowing 10. And this is my stochastics. But stochastics won't really work beautifully when we see Y wave also, because this is in the range increase in volatility. So uh, these these um, twists, I mean these uh, crosses, are not really so reliable. So to make the long story short, I would avoid this Y wave to take trace. And also, yeah, uh, you know, a um, couple of uh, traders suggest the prices in the Y wave, uh, in, in the Kumo now, Chikou span overlapping the candles and Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen crossing over time. So, yeah, that's another reason why we have to stay away to look for the buy chance in this particular case. All right, consolidating. Candles below Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen, Shikou Span, not free. Right, right, exactly. All right, Kumo. All the lines are same level. Right, everything is flat, same level, so it's consolidating. Right, no trend, no directions. All right, Charles, good to see you. As the price is below Kijun Sen, there's a high possibility it will go down. Yeah. In higher time frames, it's uptrend, so the price can break upwards. So what I would wait is the breakout of the recent high upwards, in this case. Unless the price breaks up out upwards, I will just hold it. Yeah, because it might go down anytime. And if you look at the 5, it's more obvious. If you look at look at this um, zoom out version of a 5 minute chart, this is also Y wave and ranging a uh, couple of times. Testing a couple of times on this uh, higher level, 1.32 level upwards. So, um, yeah. And most likely, 1 hour, Kijun Sen will go flat. Technically right now, this is uptrending on this Kijun Sen angle, but I expect the Kijun Sen will go flat on the next candle, or next next candle, it's gonna go flat, and there will be no trend uppers. Alright, so yeah, that's one of the examples of um, why I don't I really like this pattern. And like I said yesterday, on this GBP USD was quite tricky because we have a another Y wave in the past uh, between um, 16th of August until 17th of August. There's a Y wave pattern here too in this one hour chart. And now this is appearing the same one. So in this case, 
right? Uh, we have to wait for the breakout of the recent high. Or if you, we're gonna be safer, if you're gonna break out, if you're gonna wait for the breakout of this pin bar upwards and look for the buy chance, right? So ideally, you look for the buy chance from here onwards. So in this case too, I wait for the price breaks, this recent high uppers, and at the next pushback, I will look for the buy chance. So yeah, this is Y wave. So yeah, hold on. So um, another pair. So I I have uh, two pairs that I wanted to talk about. So this is one of the pairs GBPUSD that's in Y wave. So it's not really ideal to explain how we can manage these two positions. So here is another one, USCCAD. In the daily chart, USCCAD looks very beautiful downtrending. As you can see, Kumo's trending down all the way. And Senko Span B looks to be, I think this is going down. And Senko Span A down. And Kijun Sen is also going downwards too. When the Kumo's trending downwards, then uh, Senko Span B is the upper part and Senko Span A is the lower part of the Kumo. But we can see that both are trending downwards, as well as the Kijun Sen. So I look at the um, lower time frame, which is 1. Alright, so in this 1 hour chart 2, we see a similar Kumo shape. Um, to make sure that we see the whole Kumo. Um, yeah, Senko Span B down, A down, and Kijun Sen. Kijun Sen is also going downwards too. Right. So sorry. Yeah. So to me, this is better setup, and there's no Y waves here, right? There's no Y waves. There's no P wave. So this is great setup for me. After the breakout of the recent low downwards, it's trending downwards right now. So on this chart example, I will talk about how I would manage two positions. Um. As uh, this is, this seems to be a perfect example. So far, so good. All right, good to see you, everyone. Thank you for joining. All right. Okay, so um, let's uh, let's break it down to lower time frame, which is. 15. Okay, so in 15, I take the Bollinger Bands. I take the Bollinger Bands, just take out the Ichimoku now. And Bollinger Bands expanding, and this is a beautiful band walking. The price is going down di between division 1 2 downwards. So the, uh, the um, downtrend is quite stable right now. So is the price comes back to this a uh, Bollinger, uh, Bollinger Band deviation 1 then I will look for the sell chance well actually this is one of the confirmations to take a sell from here and other chance might be stochastic dead cross so let me show the stochastic dead cross and yep unfortunately it's been dead crossing already so we have to wait for the next dead cross after the gold cross so it should go like this and after the next dead cross we can look for the sell chance or it might there might be some retracement upwards there might be there might be some retracement and it might test this level this uh, recent resistance recent sorry support on this uh, 1.315 area and goes downwards this way too or it might come back to um, to one of these uh, Fibonacci lines. It might come back to one of these lines and continue to go down this way. So either way, I wait for the pullback and uh, look for the next sell chance. Okay, so this is how I build up the, these um, um, trading edges to sell in this case but um, let me get to the topic for today so let's say I take um, to uh, I take a sell 
for example, for some reason, let's say I confirm the setting edge here. So in this case, I take uh, two, two positions, one, two, right? And the stop losses will be slightly above the recent high, which are at this level. So these are stop losses, and these are the sales. Okay? So as the price keeps going this way, as the price keeps going down this way, and after the breakout of the recent low downwards, and once I see the next pullback, then I move these stop losses to break even. Okay? So, because in theory, this is reverse in wave. In theory, it becomes reverse in wave consecutive, and this is a definition of downtrend on Ichimoku. So, this is once I confirm the next pullback after the breakout, then I move these stop losses to break even at the same time, at the same time, so that it becomes a, a um, uh, either break even or win game now. So I can uh, safely go to bed. Yeah, if I if I can't move the stop losses break even before I go to bed, then I will just take out. I will just exit on these positions and come back to the next chart sometime. All right. So this is the initial um, idea of um, when, where I put the stop losses and how I move these stop losses to break even. Okay. All right, Mr. Fernandez. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's exactly what we're looking at right now. <laughs> you you get the good guess. Yep. Um, all right. Okay, so let me keep going. Let me keep going. So once I see a decent downtrend, once I start to see a decent downtrend, which can be expected because daily chart is moving down and one hour chart is moving down too. Right? So we can expect in lower time frames that the price break, continue to break the uh, the recent low downwards to this way okay so how i manage these positions and how i trail these positions will be one of the positions i trail based on the uh, this 15 minute chart so once i confirm the next pullback once i confirm this second pullback then i move one of these stop losses to break to slightly lower which is at this level so that I can secure this amount of profit okay but the other one I keep it with a break even until I see a next uh, pullback in higher time frames which might happen in one hour or daily chart uh, whichever time frame the pullback happens in the future, I, I you know, drag this uh, break-even line to lower. But uh, one, one of the positions keeps trading the profit based on this 15-minute chart. So in this case, I'm fixed, I'm fixed on these time frames. So I only look at the daily chart. Oops, hold on. I only look at the daily chart and one-hour chart. Okay. H1 and this is 15 minute time frame and when I take two positions then um, I trail profit in one of the positions with a 15 minute chart and the other one with either one hour or daily And as, as the price continues to go down, I add uh, further uh, positions too. I, I add uh, more positions. So let's say if there's a breakout of the recent low downwards on the second one, then um, you know whatever confirmations I take, I will add another cell. Cell plus two. I take two positions from here and I trail in the same manner. 
so that it can compound the profit and interest. Okay. And so one of them, right, is trading profit in 15 in this case. So I don't look at the 5 or I don't look at the 30 minute chart. I don't look at the 4 hour chart. I only stick to daily 1 hour and 15 because these are the time frames um, that I confirm the trend and also that, that I confirm the trading edge. And that's why, um, you know, I would um, focus on these three time frames only as I trail the profit. So, um, so um, yeah, uh, on this position, on this 15-minute um, trail, is more is the most aggressive type of um, uh, trail, you know, trading position. While the other one would trail based on one hour or daily chart. So that means, uh, um, if so if one hour chart goes flat. I mean, if the Kijun Sen goes flat and Kumo goes flat in one hour chart, then I will look for exit timing on the second position. But as long as um, one hour chart points downwards, one hour chart Kumo and Kijun Sen go down, I trail the profit on other position. But the other one, I keep trading it based on the 15 minute chart. Does that make sense, everyone? It's kind of complicated, maybe. Uncle, when to trail stop loss and what trend goes against our position, uh, we'll hedge it. So you mean to trail stop loss, you will use higher time frames? Yeah, so one of the positions I trail based on the 15, and the other one I trail based on one hour or daily chart. As long as they are going down. So this is in theory, right? This is in theory. So one trading stop and one break even stop. Yeah, in this case, yeah. So let's say in one hour chart, let's say we found a next pullback like this. Let's say this is one hour. Sorry about the messy drawing here. But let's say let's assume that this is one hour wave and you see a pullback here in one. Then I move one of the stop losses to slightly below sorry slightly above the recent high in one hour. Once I confirm the breakout in one hour chart. Yeah. All right, Marusen. On average, uh, do you um, do your one-hour trading stop losses produce more profit overall than than fifteen or five-minute trading? Yes, exactly, exactly. Because uh, I expect the bigger a reward to risk in one-hour chart than fifteen-minute chart. Of course, fifteen-minute chart has more waves up and down, so it might come back. It might come back to the stop loss. And when I lose a position. But uh, you know, even if I lose that position, I have other one with break even. And as long as one hour chart, daily chart is going down, I keep other one. Because 15 minute chart retracement can be just temporary and it continues to go down. So I look for another sell chance after exiting the 15 minute trading position. Okay, so um, let me show you my trade in the past, which I took on CHF JPY, so that you can have the idea of uh, where I took the trade and where where it, uh, where the the positions positions were uh, stopped out. So let me switch it to uh, MT5. It's been a while since I used the MT5 on this live. So hold on, let me get it prepared. 
to have a better picture of what I'm saying here. So yeah, this is a CHF JPY. Okay. And um, yeah, this is exactly where I took a trade. So this one, after Tokyo Box breakout and a couple of other confirmations like uh, Fibonacci bounce and uh, Skag 6 gold cross in 15 minute chart, I took two positions here. Right? I took two positions. This is a real trade. And there is a uh, data here on, on the below. Let me show it to you quickly. I click the toolbox and yeah. CHFJPY, I bought it at 116.490, 116.481 one level. So, about the same level on this one, 116.480 level. 116.480 so, level, I took the two buys. As you can see on the data, I took two buys here, okay? And my initial stop loss was here on the green, green, uh, green line. Or initial stop loss. So this is SL and this is buy. Buy times two. And once I see the trend upwards, then I move the stop losses to break even. Okay. Let me close it so that you can see the whole picture. Alright. And as it as I trail the profit, uh, one of them was trading with the 15 minute chart and this is a 15 okay, this is a 15 minute chart and one of them uh, the 15 was a red one uh, sorry the green one this is based on one hour this is based on one hour this is based 15 minute chart all right yeah so in 15 minute um, stop loss it was trading aggressively so I exited here this was exit I got almost 80 pips of profit on the first position and on the second one uh, one hour recent low was on this level so I kept it here the line and it took uh, it was taken out here exit okay so my stop loss was about 20 pips of stop loss at that time 20 pips of stop loss and uh, this one was a 40 I think it was like 51 pips of um, profit I got but the other one which was trading the profit based on M15 was um, 80 pips of profit this was 80 pips of profit So, one of the positions I got was, um, yeah, 1 to like 2.5 uh, uh, risk to reward ratio, while the other one, M15, got uh, 1 to 4 risk to reward ratio. <coughs> and this is how I trail these positions. And I, I, I wanted to take out this one hour position manually here but because I had a live stream like this and I had a couple of calls at that time I wasn't able to take it out manually so I just let the hit I just let the price hit hit this uh, stop loss here and uh, for for those who are GTS members global trading school members uh, currently between a um, between uh, yeah until September now, I actually recorded the video real time when exactly took that position and when I exactly exit these positions. I recorded real time so the members would know exactly how I was thinking about the market that way in that in, at, at that time. But um, yeah, so this is one of the examples of how I trail these two positions, two positions, and the reason why I take two positions is that even if the price retraces backwards in 15 as long as the daily chart is trending upwards this way so let's say this is a daily chart and this is one hour chart right h1 as long as daily chart is moving up there is still a chance that the price continue to go up this way okay 
In this case, in one or chart, it went to the range. It went into the range already. So I just kept it here uh, at the recent low. Because daily chart was still trending upwards. But M15 is the most aggressive type of position. So I just take it out here um, automatically. But if the price continue to go up this way, which is most likely because daily chart is still moving up. And it, in that case, I will still look for the buy chance as long as daily shows is uptrending. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> it's kind of complicated, right? So, and this is actually my original uh, strategy that I just came up uh, about like uh, three or four years ago. And ever since I managed its positions this way, um, you know, I, I can increase, first of all, the risk to real ratio. And also my winning rate actually increases more too. Well, actually my winning rate is only like a 35 or 40 percent uh, monthly basis in average. But still, you know, I value the risk to reward ratio more than the winning rate. And I count, uh, I count the break even as loss. And that's why I say my winning rate is only 40 percent including these break evens as the, lo as the losses. So anyways, um, yeah, I will show you exactly how I manage these two positions uh, in the future too, in my future lives, whenever I take trades. So uh, you can always come back to my channel because, um, yeah, this is more practical, right? This is more practical and I want to be practical when it, when it comes to, you know, showing the way I take trades and the way I exit also. So yeah, hopefully, I was thinking that the price continued to go up because JPY was quite weak at that time and CHF was quite strong. So fundamentally speaking, I thought that the price would go up this way, but unfortunately it hit the, uh, it, it hits the stop losses on these places. But oh well, right? I don't, I don't lose yet. And this is exactly how I describe it, right? To eat the body part only. So I think I've ta talked about this one before, but uh, when you when you see this as a fish, like for example, um, when you see this as a fish, let me see if I can draw it, right? This is a tail, and this is a body part, and this is the this is the head part, right? So in Japan, we say, uh, you know, don't eat the head or tail, but just eat the body part because that's where the juice is. So I don't really, you know, um, I don't look for the buy chance exactly from the bottom or I don't uh, look for the exit timing at the very top. And I think it's, um, it's not really realistic and it's not really ideal because the trend might continue to go up this way. So whenever it breaks down or whenever it, you know, whenever it goes backwards uh, reasonably, uh, we have to take take it out, take out these uh, positions exit. So only focus on the body part to eat, then you can survive on the market with the healthy stomach, All right? Yeah, actually that's one of my uh, favorite uh, saying in Japanese uh, forex or any market like uh, proverbs. Anyways, <laughs> yeah. When you check the daily Kijunsen, do you only check it once a day because sometimes it may go flat? Um, I check it in uh, three times a day, morning, afternoon, evening. I check the daily chart or four hour chart Kijunsen three times a day. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Baxi, so trading on two time frames, uh, that's a great strategy. Yep. Right, right. Trading means like, you know, um, following this, um, following this profit. Uncle, do you consider volatility in such trades? How and how is it to manage? Uh, if you can explain. 
I don't really care about the volatility actually. Um, as long as it goes upwards, then you know it should go up. As long as it goes downwards, it should go downwards too. But I am kind of stay away, staying away from this CHF pair and New Zealand pairs because they are uh, they are really volatile. So I found that uh, you know this CHF pair and New Zealand pairs, um, even if I see a decent trend in two time frames, in higher time frames, right? Whenever I take trades, it get loss cut or it get like break evens many times. So if you are not really familiar with forex trades or a strategy, I recommend you to st stay away from this CHF or New Zealand because it goes up and down quite sharply in a minute, and you may get you may get discouraged, all right, by the fact that you get stopped out many many times. And what happened afterwards? Let me show you. What happened afterwards is that the price went all the way down. So it was good that I took these profits here. And now I don't look at this market anymore because it's ranging the whole time in the daily chart and um, in lower time frames as well. So CHFJPY. Um, if I check it on the daily chart, it's going flat. Oh, hold on. The daily chart is flat, right? Um, Kumo flat and Kijun Sen flat now. So when Kijun Sen flat and Kumo flat, Right, it looks to be uptrending, and Ichimoku theory. This is, uh, this is um, uh, buy equilibrium. I mean, the equilibrium is buy, right, towards buy, buy biased. So we can still expect the price go up this way, but because of the fact that the Kumo horizontal and Kijun Sen horizontal, there is still a chance that the price can go downwards too to the Kijun Sen, right? The price can go down to Kijun Sen, and you know, as you look for the buy chance, as the price can, continues to go down, you may stop out many times. And that's why you don't want to look for the buy chance when Kumo and Kijun Sen are flat. Because this is 50-50 chance. So until you see a next uptrend in higher time frames, in daily or 4, we have to stay away from this currency pair. In 4 of our chart too, this is kind of a uh, ranging this is looking like a sanyaku gyakuten signal in ichimoku tenkan kijun did cross chikospan breakout is happening so we can expect the price can break the kumo downwards and it can be a serious downtrend afterwards until the kijun sen in the daily chart somewhere here so anyways um, in this kind of condition i don't look for the buy chance All right. Oh, there's no background music. Oh, it's actually it's played. Hold on. I think this is too low the volume. Yeah. So usually I have a uh, background music. I thought it's played within the system, but looks like the the music is picked up from this PC to the microphone, and it's actually you know coming to you. I thought it's from the system, but it's kind of strange. Anyways, so now I think you can hear the background music. Okay, thank you, Kate. This is a really efficient strategy. Sure, sure. This is logic, and you don't get biased, right? You don't get biased, and that's the most important thing about the market because we cannot, we cannot manipulate the market. We cannot control the market. We just have to follow the fact that it goes up or down, and um, but we cannot do anything else. So if it goes backwards, then we just take it. If it goes towards the direction, then you take it, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, the fish analogy is a great perspective of capturing trends. Yep, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite analogy. Yeah. Euro JPY, all right. On the P wave, if the upper line is flat and the lower part is on the P wave, if the upper line flat and oh yeah, that's called P wave too. That will be a ascending triangle or descending triangle, and that will be another P wave structure. 
which is happening on AUDJPY now. Actually, in AUDJPY, I find that this is a ascending triangle. Um, as I introduced on the Ichimoku weekly um, forex forecast on Sunday, this is a beautiful ascending triangle. So in this case too, you look at the Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen cross, and as long as Tenkan Sen above the Kijun Sen, we can still expect that price breaks up or this way. But now what we can find is that uh, they're kind of crossing um, uh, Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen dead cross in this flower chart. So, and uh, this is about to be gold crossing yeah. So once it gold cross, then it might break upwards afterwards. So that's something that we can wait for this AUD JPY 4 hour chart. Let me take a look at the daily chart too. Yeah, on the daily chart, uh, the Kijun Sen continues to be down below the Tenkan Sen. So there's a still possibility the price to break upwards too. Yep. Okay. XAUUSD, I think I will take a look at it uh, next time. So if you can remind me later. I, th I don't think we have enough time to look at other pairs now. I will be ending the live in about 5 minutes. Because it's been already like 1 hour. Time flies. But hopefully you get the idea of how I capture trend and take trades with two positions and trail these positions in different time frames because this is the main topic for today's lecture all right Jeren fish philosophy is also uh, that you better join the Ichimoku community <laughs> it, uh, it is better to teach someone to fish than to bring them a fish every day sure sure how to fish right I teach you how to fish instead of just giving you a bunch of fishes All right, <laughs> you turn it up. <laughs> All right, Gabriel, cut the loser quick. Winning trades uh, load. That's uh huh. <laughs> okay, I won't say that word because I think YouTube will ban me. <laughs> yep, that's true though. That's true. Yep, Hendra. Yeah, I'm sorry. I have to go. Um, I have um, I have to go out and eat the dinner afterwards so yeah i will be ending the live in about like five minutes or a couple of minutes now so yeah hopefully you can come back to my channel uh, sometime in the future tomorrow or you know anytime and you can remind me to look at the xau aud while looking at a chart you look for buy chances or sell chances or uh, unbiased view I look at look at it in unbiased view yeah because we cannot control the market I just do whatever I can right I just do whatever I can to capture trends and get capture the trading edges but the rest I don't really know the price may go downwards the may, price may go against you and that's why money management is very important all right, so everyone, thank you for joining. That was a very, um, I hope that was a very interesting session today. So every day I talk about different topics and today was Wednesday. So I talked about my own strategy and how to manage these multiple positions. And I will continue to show you how I manage these multiple positions, like three positions or four positions at the same time, and how to trail these multiple positions in the future. So tomorrow is on Thursday, so I will talk about Ichimoku Kinko Hyo. I will talk about uh, some of the market based on this original book of Ichimoku Kinko Hyo and how you can actually apply this Ichimoku knowledge to the market. And more specifically, tomorrow's tomorrow's um, theme is going to be how to draw powerful forecast lines. So when you come to my website and scroll down a little bit, uh, there is a schedule table where you can see all the future uh, programs. 
So tomorrow is going to be about how to draw the profile forecast lines. So hopefully you can come back to my channel tomorrow too and uh, enjoy my contents too. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right. All right. I got lots of comments now. Thank you, everyone. I hope you have a great uh, rest of your day. Okay. All right, Jeroen. Uh, Zoib, Mayarni, Gamini, Fortis. Thank you. All right, Hendra, Gabriel. All right. Uh, check, uh, check Mate, mate, sorry, Sander, uh, um, Rid, uh, Rid, Rid Jail, sorry, <laughs> let me try to announce, let me try to pronounce names, Ashok, Sander, Jaye, Henry, Jeroen, and Anthony, Mr. Finances, Bugsy, Cyril, thank you for joining everyone, and I hope to see you on the next one, and until then, stay healthy, and stay gold, bye for now, Matane. Thank you.